Hi, and welcome to Maker Monday. My name is Sandy Roberts, and I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System. Every Monday at 2 p.m., I'll be coming to you with a new Maker project. Um, unfortunately, our live stream earlier today had a bunch of technical problems. I'm not really sure what happened to our sound. It cut out for a big chunk of the video. So I'm reshooting the project with hopes that you will still be able to participate. Um, so today we will be making marble runs. This is a great engineering activity that you can get really creative with. Um, it's a wonderful way to play with forces and motion and experiment with the use of gravity. And um, at the end of the day, it's just a ton of fun. You could do this with your family, with brothers and sisters, um, and you can make this as big or as little as you want. So there's a lot of room and flexibility to create pretty much anything that you can imagine. So let me show you what we're working on. All right, this is the marble run I put together. It's a pretty simple um, marble run and Basically, the idea is you're going to take a small ball, or in this case, a marble. You're going to create an obstacle course for it, and your marble is going to run right down and be caught at the end. Pretty simple idea, right? And maybe you've built something like this before, um, but it's a really great opportunity to create. So I'm not going to tell you how to build this particular marble run because you want to create something that's yours and unique, just like you. But I will give you some tips on how you can make your marble run really, really great and avoid some of the common problems you might run into with um, an engineering project like this. So why don't we start by getting our materials together? Obviously, you're going to need to start with some kind of a marble, a small ball, um, anything like that. If you don't happen to have marbles around, um, you can always ask your parents. They might have some in like a vase that they use for flowers. But if you don't have any, you can try a rubber ball, ping pong ball, a golf ball. They're all a little bit larger, but you'll just have to scale up your marble run a little bit to make them fit. You can also make your own ball out of a bit of Play-Doh or clay or paper clay like we used for seed bombs last week. Um, so you can, you can definitely adapt it. I've even used gumballs, you know, the candy, um, and on some occasions, even those um, peanut butter filled M&Ms, which <laughs> roll really well. So get creative with it and see what you can find that will work. If you don't happen to have a ball, why not get out a matchbox car or something like that and see if you can make a matchbox car run instead of a marble run. So the first thing you're gonna need is something that's gonna travel through your obstacle course, okay? Next, you need your tools. The most important are your pair of scissors. Um, you can also use a craft knife or a cardboard cutter if you have those um, and you're a little bit older, but scissors are gonna do most of what you need. If you find that you want to be poking holes or anything to help attach items, you can use a screwdriver for that or if you have one, an awl. I didn't find I really needed one, I just used my scissors for it. So scissors are your first item that you need. I'm going to put them over here. You're also going to want a ruler, okay, and a pencil. And that's because when you're building this, balance is really important. So there are going to be times that you want to measure to make sure that everything you're cutting is the same size or the same height. Um, and having a ruler can be really helpful for that. As they say, measure once, yeah, no, right? Measure twice, cut once. <laughs> Measure twice, cut once. So you really want to make sure with this project especially that you have a ruler so that you can kind of make sure that everything that you're doing is nice and level where you want it to be. Pencil, of course, to mark what you're doing. I also suggest you get out some drawing paper and sketch what you have in your head first. This is a really important thing that we often do when we're making something or when we're doing engineering or science. You want to get out your pencil and just Think first, what am I going to create? Um, how big do I want it to be? What elements do I want to include in there? Your artwork doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be fancy, but taking the time to take what's inside your brain and put it out on paper is such a really powerful experience. It's even better when you use that to work with your brothers and sisters or your parents or maybe grandparents, whoever lives with you, so that you can show them what you're thinking, what's inside your brain, and they can collaborate with you. Because sometimes the best magic happens when you take a bunch of ideas and you mix them all together. 
Okay, so take a little time to sketch out what you're doing. I did before I built my marble run, just wanted to think about what shapes I wanted to use. And so that really helps to give that a little bit of a sketch before you get started. I'm gonna put my pencil over here so I can use it in a bit. You're also gonna need some tape. I like to use masking tape for this project, and here's why. Masking tape is relatively easy to remove. So I'll use a little bit of masking tape to put things down as I prototype through my, my uh, marble run. But the truth is I might get an angle wrong. Um, I might size something incorrectly. And being able to remove the masking tape without destroying my marble run is really a good thing. But it still holds nice and strong. You can just go with the masking tape or if you want, you can always upgrade later and add duct tape, especially colorful duct tape to make it look really great. Or if you're um, someone who loves hot glue, you can use a bit of hot glue to make everything stick in place. But I find that masking tape is a really good choice for this project. Things like invisible tape or clear tape tend not to be really strong and they can get stuck to each other. So I would personally avoid them. Got to go with the masking tape. As far as actual building materials, okay, we have um, the base of our, our materials are mostly going to be cardboard rolls. So these are from paper towels and these are from some toilet paper rolls. Um, they work great. They're inexpensive. I keep them around. I just keep a bag of them. So I always have some on hand and they are going to form kind of all the towers for our marble run. So you're going to want a bunch of those. You're also going to need some cardboard as your base. It's important to kind of give this a measurement so you know what you're working with. This one, if I recall, yep, it's about 12, 12 by 18. And this is a nice size to start with. Um, so that's kind of about the size of like a half sheet cake. Um, you'll see this one has been used before. It's got some paint on it. This one's kind of ripped up. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can cover it with paper or paint first before you begin if you like. I like to kind of do all my decorating when I'm all finished. So this is a good size to start. Now, if you want to do bigger, you can do bigger. Go big. Also, you can consider building multiple pieces and adding them to one another and coming up with creative ways to connect your marble runs um, so you can expand what you're building. Or you can even do something fun like each member of your family can build one and then you can figure out how they connect. Um, if you do go bigger, you're going to need more supplies to build your actual marble run. If you go smaller, you may want to consider things like drinking straws and maybe a smaller bead as a ball because you're going to want to give yourself the space to make sure that you can have that marble move. So you're going to need some scrap cardboard. Some other materials that you're going to need. Um, I like to use all kinds of paper plates. These little inexpensive ones like this are really great because you can make them into funnels like that. Okay. Which are really great for directing your marble in different directions. You can also kind of make them into this taco shape like this. All right which um, gives you a lot of flexibility for directing your marble as well. So these are really versatile and really flexible, and you can use them in a lot of different ways. These kinds of paper plates, these larger ones, I really like so that I can cut the edge off of them. And that's what I actually used in my marble run to create that spiral shape, which is really fun. And you can wrap that around the paper towel tube. You can wrap that um, around a cup. So those are really versatile too. Bowls can be great, especially for like the place that you want to start your marble run. And in fact, let me show you here what I did. I just cut a little hole, um, a little tab actually in the bottom. And what you do is you um, just fold that so that it goes into your marble run. I don't like to cut just a straight hole because sometimes the marble can get stuck and it's hard to line up. So with this, you use the tab actually as the start of your marble run and attach it. And that way you have a nice, easy place to get your whole marble run started. So bowls can be really great. You can use them to create spirals too. And then we have all kinds of cups like this. These are great, especially for buckets at the end. Because as you can see, you want to make sure that there's a place for your marble to go at the end of the, the uh, marble run. It needs to fall somewhere in the bucket. So otherwise it's going to shoot out and you're going to lose your marble. And that's a really big problem, um, especially if you don't have a lot of them. So cups are really good for that. All right. 
So those are kind of some of the base materials. Look around your house and see if you can find other things like egg cartons you might be able to find, um, old toys, old packaging. Get creative with it and see what will work and see what you can incorporate into your design. But these are some of the basics that you may have around the house that are easy to use for this project. All right, let's just talk briefly about some of the science that you need to consider here. It's really important when you're building that you start at your highest spot and end at your lowest. You wanna avoid any places where things level out too much because you'll lose the momentum, you'll lose the acceleration of your marble through your run. Um, when I first built this, I didn't actually have this piece of the tower here. And what happened is this was actually leaning over and my marble went flying off. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you use lots of towers to support what you're building. Um, using extra towers is going to save you a lot of problems in the long run because it keeps your whole structure nice and stable. So don't, don't slack on your, um, your nice uh, paper towel rolls or toilet paper rolls to create your towers. Um, if you do get too many level spots, you're going to want to use those towers and adjust them. You can use it with tape or again using your uh, cardboard. You also want to avoid any situation where you're going back up. Unless you've got a lot of acceleration, like a very steep angle before it, it's gonna be really hard for your marble to go back up and then back down. So you kinda of wanna keep all of it flowing in a downward direction. That's probably the biggest challenge of this and it's also one of the most frustrating um, parts. But if you have a cell phone app that has a level on it, or you actually have a tool that is a level, which you can ask your parents for, you can check for those areas and actually make sure that your whole um, marble run is traveling downwards. So really think about that as you're building and think about the height that you're using. You want to start at your tallest place and go to your lowest. Let me show you a couple of techniques to help you actually build your marble run. We're going to switch over here to our document camera. Okay. So here I have one of my toilet paper rolls and a cardboard base. I'm also going to go ahead and grab my masking tape. Oh, kidokies. So when you're attaching your um, toilet paper roll to your base, if you just try and like stick it on there and use tape, it's going to wobble. It's going to be really hard to get it to stay flat on your base. So what you're going to want to do is cut tabs in the bottom and flay them out to um, get a good sturdy base. You need a wider base. So let me show you how to do that. The first thing we want to do is actually make sure that each and every tab is the same length. Because if we're not careful about that, we can end up with a situation where it isn't level or um, you know it's wobbly when you attach it to the base. So you really want to make sure that they're all the same. I like to use about an inch but you can do a half inch. I wouldn't go any shorter than that. It won't be um, long enough to really attach well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hold my ruler, grab my pencil, and I'm just gonna mark one inch marks along the base here. And we're just marking a couple different ones so that we can easily just use our pencil then and kind of draw a line, connect the dots like that. There we go. Okay. Then I'm just going to kind of come in here and almost make it look like little teeth. Again, you don't want to go over an inch because that gets really big. The smaller, the better on something like this because you'll get a wider base, a, a little more um, attachment, but you don't have to go really tiny. I'm going to do between half an inch and three quarters of an inch as I go around. And again, you can measure this if you want to or eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect by any means. There we go. And we're just going to cut all those little tabs like that. All 
Okay. And now you're just going to fold them out. And again, you want to try and make sure that they're all just about the same. Okay, so you can see, you can just kind of adjust them a little bit like this. All right, so you like that. You can see it kind of makes like a little flower almost. But what we're going to do today is you're going to put that against your cardboard. You're going to take your tape. And you're going to attach it like this. And you're just going to tape it down really well. And again, later on when you're all done, you can go ahead and use hot glue or duct tape if you want to make that a little more solid. Okay, so there you go. You can kind of see that's nice and sturdy. All right. Now, if you want to attach another tube to the top, Again, you can see that if you attach it to the top, it's going to roll right off. That's not going to work. So we're going to go to our tabs again. You're just going to kind of mark about how wide you want that to be. And you're going to do short tabs on one side and a longer tab on the other, like that. So. Just gonna cut like that, watching your fingers carefully. And you're gonna cut like that. Again, just being careful with your fingers. Fold one side out and the other side. Okay. And then you're just gonna place that in like that. You can kind of see and use a bit of tape, nice long strip of tape. To tape it underneath and hold it all in place like that. Okay. And there we go. Ta-da. Now that's nice and sturdy and it's going to hold your tube. And again, notice it's going higher to lower and you can adjust that. And that's why we made the first one a little shorter than the last. Okay. Just like that. All right. So that's how you can basically put together your towers and your tubes for your marble to flow. One other thing to show you. Okay. When we have our paper plate, this is a great way to make spirals. It's pretty simple. You're just going to cut into the plate and cut out the center. As you twist that, you can twist that around a paper towel tube, all right? And that will give you a spiral shape. Now, you can do it either way. I found sometimes that when I went at a really steep angle though, I needed to put a second paper uh, plate here to kind of create a run so I had walls on both sides. So you may want to experiment with that because you can just lay one paper um, plate on top of another and put walls on both sides and give you your spiral. If you want a tighter spiral, what you're going to do is you're going to cut lots of little tabs along the plate like this. Okay. And then you can lay them over each other, kind of tuck them in together like this and tape them in place. And that's going to give you a much tighter spiral. And you can even cut pieces out if there are more than you need. You can just go ahead and take out some of those tabs. And that gives you a nice tight spiral that you can attach to your marble run. 
So that's a really fun thing to play with and all you need are a couple paper plates for that. All right, here we go. So I hope that you have some fun playing with these marble runs. Um, if you make one of your own, make sure that you put it online at, with your parents' permission and tag Warren, Lib, uh, Warren Library. So you can use hashtag Warren Lib, W-A-R-R-E-N-L-I-B, and let us see what you're making. Maybe post a little video of your marble run in action. I'll be back again on Friday at 2 p.m. with Friday Steam. We're gonna be learning all about steam engines and the power of convection and how we can use that for mechanical motion. So that'll be really, really fun. I'll be back next Monday at 2 p.m. We'll be making some little bristle bots using um, dollar store electric toothbrushes. So you can do a little bit of electronics and robotics with me next Monday. Um, in the meantime, make sure that you check the Warren County Library website at warrenlib.org. We've got all of our events on the calendar, um, including materials lists for each of our projects. Um, there's so much that we're offering. There are reading groups, there are Pokemon clubs, there are story times, and then special events on weekends. So definitely make sure you check that out and register for events and see what we have to offer. We can't be with you right now, but we're trying as much as we can to be with you online. Can't wait to be back at the Makerspace uh, at the Southwest Branch, but for now, I'm Sandy Roberts. I'm the Makerspace Coordinator for the Warren County Library System, and I want you to stay safe and stay healthy and keep making. Thank you.